Hello, everybody. Welcome to I Wish You Were Dead, episode 83. After a little bit of an absence, my name is Mike Bryson. That is Fia, that is Gavin, and it is glad to be back, everybody. How are you guys doing? I'm doing Yay. good. I'm also not sure what it's glad to be back is supposed to mean. I think I was supposed to say, like, I'm happy to be back, but or, like, you know, words are hard. I'm glad to be back, and also it's good to be back, maybe? Something like that. I tell you what, I'm rusty, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm just glad that the gang's all here. Yeah. Gang is all here. Absolutely. And so, uh, I guess, Mike, since you don't have uh, a hiking update, maybe just give us a, an overall how the how the trip has been so far yeah so it has been um just one of the dumbest things i've ever chosen <laughs> to do and i love it so for just a quick update for those of you that uh um that haven't been following along with my updates um during my summer vacation this year from teaching i'm trying to hike as many of the 46 high peaks in the adirondacks and this isn't strictly true um because since the original measurements have been done there have been more accurate measurements but there's 46 um, peaks in the Adirondacks that are higher than 4,000 feet. Again, asterisks on that. I'm trying to get to on top of as many of them as I can. And it has been, um, for the most part, quite a lot of fun uh, trying to go out and hike as many as I can. I'm up to 16 so far. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I wanted to have more by this point, but between weather, between my knees, between uh, <laughs> weddings and other things going on, nice. I haven't quite gotten there. But I would like to, at the very least, um, at the very least, I'd like to be at 20 by the end of July. Yeah. If I can get, be a little more than halfway, so you know, 23, 24 by the end of July, I would be quite happy with that. No, that's awesome. awesome. And like, as as somebody who has spent a decent amount of time in the Adirondacks and likes to hike, I think I I've only done two of the the actual high peaks. Um, can I guess which two? Sure. Is it um, uh, Cascade and Porter? No. Really? Okay. That's that's the one that most people, yeah. um, or the two that most people uh, do most often. But which ones um, have you done? Uh, so I'm, I I have done Cascade. I did not do Porter. Okay. So all right. I, I'm not sure why you wouldn't do both. I, it, was, it was for, it was for it was for a school trip. Um, <laughs> all right. Fine. <laughs> it was what the professor told us to do. Um, Understand. And then I don't remember. It was when I was quite a bit younger. We went up to around Lake Placid. It wasn't Whiteface. Okay. I know that. Um, but I don't remember which one it was. Was it really, was it really anticlimactic? Yeah. Was it near Whiteface? I think so. Was it possibly Esther? Maybe. I don't... I Like I said, Esther, it was younger. Yeah. Or I, I was probably Understood. like 10. <laughs> it was younger too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, those mountains are actually Wonderful. really old. Uh, <laughs> not quite as old as they are today. That's true. True. <laughs> All right, but yeah, so that's um, that is uh, that is sort of explains my uh, my absence. It's been uh, quite a lot of fun. I recommend no one try and do it the way I'm doing. It, but <laughs> I'm having quite a good time. I'm having quite a good time. Um, uh, you know, beating my way through it. No, that's awesome. That's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. But just, you know, with, you know, I haven't been around the Adirondacks consistently for the past, you know, five years or so. Wow. Yep. And so I've never really had a good opportunity to do it, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm at least living vicariously through you doing it, Mike. <laughs> I am glad to be helping you play that part. But yeah, so today, uh, before we get into this episode, uh, even though we're already, you know, give or take four minutes into the episode. Uh, this is a friendly reminder to check out all of our cool links uh, down in the show notes. Uh, if you want to come on as a guest or have a recommendation for a guest, uh, we have some forms to fill out down below. Uh, if you would like to suggest a topic, we have some Google forms to fill out down below as well. Um, we are, the ideas are never ending in my brain, but sometimes my brain could use a little help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and today is a weird topic, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> so I will never be short of ideas, but it's always nice to have, you know, audience, you know, crowdsourced uh, material, because then at least I know a handful of listeners will be invested. Uh, so uh, 
and as well as our, our social media stuff, I haven't been keeping up as much on that as I as I should be. But uh, interacting with us on social media to suggest topics and things like that is a really great way to uh, interact with the podcast and let us know you're listening as well. So, with all of that formality out of the way, today's episode, like I said, is kind of a weird one. We're talking about state fossils. Um, and this, I guess, vaguely gets slightly political into, like, Mike's realm. Um, <laughs> so, hmm. <laughs> every state likes to claim things as their own. It's like mini nationalism. No. Oh, no. But, like, some states do it much better than others, as we'll see. Um, so for example, every state has like a state bird, a state mammal. Some get much more specific than others. Um, for example, as we're going to see, um, some states have multiple state fossils. In fact, a couple of them specify a state marine fossil versus a state terrestrial fossil or whatnot. Um, so some of them get very specific and others put in much less effort. Um, so we're going to spend... This episode and likely next episode as well, um, just going down the list of state fossils and me teaching you about them. So if you live in in a state here in the United States, if you don't live in the United States, I'm I'm sorry. Um, I'm really not sorry. We're we're having a rough go of it right now. Um, (laughs) Yeah. That was me. My question: Like, if we have international listeners, like, do they have permission to skip the next few episodes, or should they still listen? I think you should still listen because it's going to be you know. There's a lot of really cool animals and. Uh, other organisms as well it's not all animals um but um yeah there's i think this is going to be a very action-packed educational type uh you know sort of episode couple of episodes so if you don't live in the u.s i think you can still get some value out of it um but if you live in the u.s you can listen for your state except for four cases there are four states who do not have state fossils and they are all the worse for it. Um, the, those <laughs> states are Hawaii, which kind of makes sense that they're uh-huh. volcanic islands, so there's not a lot of uh, rocks that could have fossils. But there are some like recent fossils of recently extinct things that they could pick, but oh well. Um, Iowa, they proposed one in 2018, and it did not pass for whatever reason. I don't know why you wouldn't just be like, yeah, some elementary school what? kid wants th- this thing to be our state fossil. They've, but they voted no. Um, New Hampshire also does not, although they also proposed one in 2015 and that did not pass, and Rhode Island. So if you live in Hawaii, Iowa, New Hampshire, or Rhode Island, pressure your Congress people to pass a state fossil because every state should have one. Because mini nationalism? Or... I, I really, well, I think just because it's neat. I mean, it really takes what two seconds of legislative yeah. time to just write a bill saying hey this species is going to be our state fossil and you can you know yeah any museums or whatever in the state can take that and just kind of roll with it um a lot of i i am really looking forward to like iowa picking a fossil that like you know has nothing to do with their state or something like well because iowa, yeah. iowa has fossils iowa has fossils Good fossils. Right, that's what I'm saying, is that they're going to, you know, some kid's going to listen to this episode because, you know, we're big among the, you know, 8 to 12-year-old demographic. Sure. They're going to they're gonna pressure their state legislature, and the state legislature's not going to care. They're going to pass it on through, and it's going to be some fossil that has nothing to do with the state. And I'm perfectly happy with that. That doesn't, te- that doesn't <laughs> tend to be the case. Uh, they tend to be, like I said, uh, they don't like to do it if it's not something associated with their state in some fashion. Um, but... So we're just promoting fossil awareness. Exactly. I love it. I uh, gotcha. So I'm here for it. Yeah. So we're going to start right uh, and go down alphabetically. I did think about ranking them, uh, but then I thought this is an audio medium and this is going to get infinitely too chaotic uh, if I was going to do that. So uh, yeah. alphabetically, what is the first state, y'all? Alabama. Exactly. And I was hoping that you would sing it like that. Um I'll sing all of them like that if you like. <laughs> so Alabama starts off the gate strong. I've been to Alabama and yeah, I've been there. And so. Roll Tide? Uh, sure. 
Um, <laughs> but they do have an excellent state fossil. Their state fossil is Basilosaurus cetoides, which, despite having saurus in its genus name, is actually a species of early whale. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and it, it has saurus in its name because it was it's so long and odd looking that the people who first discovered it thought that it was a mosasaur, a type of aquatic uh, lizard. However, these are from uh, the Eocene epoch, so sometime, give or take, 40 to 50 million years ago or so. And it's just this super stretched out carnivorous whale. Uh, it's much more famous from over in Egypt. There's another species uh, that's much more famous over in Egypt. But we do have fossils from here in uh, Alabama as well. So uh, really, really cool, big whale. This was the first like big mammal in the oceans, which today, you know, pretty much all of our whales are fairly big. But Basilosaurus was the first whale to get big, big, like 40, 50 plus feet. Cool. Okay. I wasn't sure if I lost people there. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll edit that out. Okay. Uh, well, especially with, with my internet being weird. I was like, okay, I didn't hear okay. anything. Am I dead? Um, no, but these fossils are. Oh, hey. maybe I'll leave that in. Um, <laughs> anyway, so they named that in 1984. And so I'm going to try to do my best to go through. Some of them had good, consistent dates. Some of them, various sources that I said or that I saw gave, you know, one year, a different source said another year, but I'll try to be as, as accurate as I can. So 1984, 1984. The next state is Alaska. And I think that their fossil makes a lot of sense for them, even though they do have a lot of really cool other fossils, but their fossil is Mammuthus primigenius, the woolly mammoth. Ah, uh, yes. Which makes sense. I mean, um, yeah, it does. it's Alaska. You know, it's, it's still snowy up there, and it was snowy, for sure, when the mammoths were there. Um, and we'll see throughout, uh, you know, this episode and then the part two, a number of states pick mammoths just because they're kind of convenient. Um, <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Mammoths are convenient. Well, what about them as convenient? They're, they're cool. Everybody likes mammoths. Um, and also they are, as, as we've talked about before on the show, um, the, the younger fossils are, the more likely that they haven't been destroyed yet. So with mammoths being relatively young, you know, only potentially 10, 20,000 years old, um, you know, it's much more likely that they're around. So a lot of states have mammoth or mastodon fossils. I see. Okay. Yeah. Plus, like I said, mammoths are cool. Everybody likes mammoths. Yeah. So they, they specified the woolly mammoth. Some states specify other species. And then there's one state that just says the genus Mammuthus, but we'll get there when we get there. But Alaska got there in 1986, so slightly after Alabama. Uh, the 80s seemed to be a big time of naming state fossils for whatever reason. I would have thought that it would have been the <laughs> mid-90s uh, <Yep. laughs> after Jurassic Park, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Next up, we have Arizona with a fossil that I'm going to butcher because it's a plant and plant names are strange. It's Aerocaryoxylon arizonicum, which is a species of really large tree, uh, specifically the kind that's very famous from Petrified Forest National Park. Cool. Yeah, so they're really f for the time. So they were around um, across the Permian and Triassic period. So based more or less ranging from 300 to 200 million years ago. And they were for the time really, really big trees. Um, you know, they could be potentially up to like 200 feet tall, uh, more than two feet thick. So these were for the time, probably some of the biggest trees on the planet. Pretty big. Yeah. And they have a whole national park all to themselves. And that fossil was named in 1988, but Arizona is the first one on our list to actually have two. So the the tree is their state fossil, but they also named a state dinosaur 
because I guess trees weren't cool enough for them. So in 2018, they named Sonorosaurus Thompsoni as their state dinosaur. Uh, Sonorosaurus is a titanosaur bracket uh, sauropod. So some of the biggest uh, long neck, long tail dinosaurs uh, pretty much ever. Uh, Sonorosaurus was a fairly modest size for that group, but uh, still could be, you know, quite large, you know, um, around 50 feet long or so, maybe 26 feet tall because they were uh, the kind with the long, fairly upright held neck. Um, but Sonorosaurus is named after the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. So that's why they Thank decided you. to uh, to, na- to name that as their dinosaur. Next up, we have Arkansas. And this one really surprised me because I don't tend to think of fossils when I think of Arkansas. I think of several other things when I think of Arkansas. I'm going to make a lot of states offending people's, or I'm going to make a lot of jokes offending people's states. I'm really sorry. Um, I mean, to be fair, there's like six good states, so. Oh, Delaware's coming up, buddy. Um, (laughs) That's not one of them. Oh, I know. Spoiler alert. Um, But yeah, Arkansas, their state fossil is Arkansaurus fridei. Oh my God. Yeah, so there's a right. there's a dinosaur named after the state of Arkansas, which I did not know. I don't know if nepotism is the right word for this, but like, <laughs> man, all right. I had never heard of it, but it is uh, a species of ornithomimosaurian dinosaur. So the ones that look and function similarly to like ostriches. So, um, hmm. yeah, basically an, an ostrich, but with teeth and a long uh, tail more or less. Um, but yeah, so they named that in 2017, which I thought was, was interesting that, uh, that was fairly recent. Um, yeah. And like I said, I don't tend to associate Arkansas with fossils, let alone dinosaur fossils, dinosaur fossils that far East in the U S is fairly uncommon. But, uh, yeah, this guy lived in the middle Cretaceous, uh, you know, give or take a hundred years ago or so, and um, was a slightly taller than a human um, than the average than the average person. Next up, we have California, who has a couple of really good ones as well. We'll get to some of the not good ones, but the the beginning of this episode is pretty packed with good fossils. So, California, their state fossil is Smilodon fatalis, which is just an excellent name. <laughs> For, yes, it is. For the saber-toothed cat, the the big famous one, specifically from the La Brea Tar Pits. Uh, California. Smilodon. I like yeah. that word. Uh, California is extremely famous for Smilodon fossils pretty much just because of the La Brea Tar Pits. They have... Didn't we do a whole episode on the La Brea Tar Pits? We sure did. And if I was a better host, I would have... Uh, I would know what episode number that was. Um, yeah, you can find Yeah, it. that's true. But yeah, um, I'm talking to the listener, just so you know, not you. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Smilodon, you know, was around for quite a long time, but notably from the La Brea Tar Pits, like fairly recent, you know, uh, late Pleistocene. So uh, only a few thousand years ago, maybe 12 to 18,000 years ago or so. And they named that fossil all the way back in 1973. So they were very proud of it very early, but much more. Oh, yeah. yeah. Much more recently, they actually named a state dinosaur, which also surprised the heck out of me because I did not know that dinosaurs had been found in California before. But in 2017, they named Augustinolophus morrisi as their state dinosaur. This is a duckbill dinosaur, one with a, a pretty cool little head crest sort of thing. Um, I don't know why because obviously there's no uh evidence for this but everywhere that i've found like pictures of it online seem to color it the colors of like a cow <laughs> sure. That's um, funny but yeah this one and this, this was a fairly good sized uh dinosaur as well i think we only have pretty fragmentary remains but from that you can get a decent 
you know, if you have, you know, some arm bones and along with, we have most of the skull. Um, but this was, you know, 25, 26 foot long uh, animal, you know, with its head being probably eight to 10 feet off the ground and being about like three tons or so. So, you know, a pretty good sized animal. So they, these are found in California too? For the most, uh, yes, this specific one. Yeah, it was, it has only been yeah. found in California. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. And this was found uh, dating back to the very end of the Cretaceous period, right before dinosaurs went extinct. The next one is Colorado. And this is actually, there's some technicalities here with Colorado. Colorado is a state that's very famous for its dinosaur fossils. However, uh, they named uh, back in 1982, one that most people have probably heard of, but Stegosaurus, an incredibly famous dinosaur. However. I know that one. Yeah. And it's a good one too. I love Stegosaurus. Mm-hmm. What's the butt though? The species that they named does not exist. What? So I, you know, I'm surprised that this is the first time we've gotten this because I have, I would have guessed that, especially if a lot of this was happening in the '80s, there was a whole lot of mm-hmm. naming things that didn't actually exist by accident. Right. Yeah, that was my prediction mm-hmm. too. So the species that they named was Stegosaurus armatus, which, in their defense, was the original species of Stegosaurus named way back in 1887. However, people, through a a lot of the quirks of how naming species works, that species is no longer considered real. Um, And the Colorado legislature has not changed it. (laughs) So. So is it just classed into a different nope it's it's still Sega it's still Segasaurus. uh it's just different s- species gotcha yeah um and basically the the way that naming things work is would wh- whichever thing got named first gets precedent this one turns sure. out is a weird case because Stegosaurus armatus was the first named species so of Stegosaurus so that should be the one that gets precedent there's a whole complex reason that we don't have time to go into uh, as to why. But if you live in Colorado, uh, this is an interesting case of learning some of the quirks of how taxonomy works. So s- springboard off of this as you will. <laughs> Next, we have Connecticut, who uh, in 1991 it named Eubrontes giganteus as their state fossil, which is fun because those are footprints. Connecticut has dinosaur footprints as its state fossil, which I think is really neat. Oh, I was like, immediately I went to Bigfoot mm-hmm. with that, and I was like, Bigfoot? Yeah. Uh, Eubrontes is, uh, so we name trace fossils, things like footprints, things like, um, footprints are the, are the most common one, but also... Um, like feeding traces, like if you get a worm that's just sort of digging through the sediment eating, uh, because those aren't the actual animal, they get their own names. And it's it's hard to say, you know, this specific dinosaur made these footprints. So because we can't know for sure, we give them their own scientific naming system. And so the mm-hmm. ones in Connecticut, famously from uh, Dinosaur State Park in Connecticut, uh, are named Eubrontes giganteus because they're uh, big theropod footprints. So the meat-eating, two-legged dinosaurs. Um, And so they named that in 1991. But in 2017, they named their state dinosaur, the dinosaur that probably made those footprints, Dilophosaurus. The the one that supposedly from Jurassic Park spits the venom. (laughs) We've, We've talked before about how it almost certainly did not do that and was much bigger than it showed in the movie. But was still a really cool dinosaur uh, from the you know late Triassic, early Jurassic, uh, at give or take you know give or take two hundred million years ago. So, uh, like I said, it was more than likely the one making those footprints. So I think it's cool that they named both the the footprint and the maker as their state fossil and dinosaur. Next, we have the best state in the union, Delaware. 
I swear to God. I swear to God, Gavin. Have you ever been to Delaware? I sure haven't. Okay. Because there's no reason to go to Delaware. <laughs> no, it's pretty hard to drive through by accident. Uh, on the contrary, it's really easy to drive through by accident because it's so small because there's, there's nothing there. Right, but it's not in between anywhere. It's just sort of out by itself. Oh, fair enough. All right, I'll give you that. Um, All right, go ahead. Let's get this over with. <laughs> so they do have one one boring one and then one kind of okay one. Uh, so their state fossil is Shock. Bellum Nutella Americana, named in 1996. Uh, that is a type of cephalopod that had a, you know, we've, we've talked previously about how ammonites, we've referred to them as the swirly-shelled squid boys. Uh, these are the straight-shelled squid boys, seemingly more or less just a squid, but uh, with an internal, much more firm mineralized shell than squid today have. Squid do have, um, they're called squid pens, just like a little uh, chunk of calcium carbonate in uh, in their mantle. But these ones were just much more solid and use that as much more of a framework for their body than modern squid do. So that, that's the one that I said again was kind of lame, and I'm definitely leaning into my vertebrae bias here. Um, <laughs> however... Just this year, in the year of our Lord 2022, Delaware named Dryptosaurus aqualunguius as their state dinosaur, which uh, is a pretty good-sized theropod meat-eating dinosaur. Um, it could get up to, you know, roughly 25 feet long and uh, was probably more or less the size, maybe a bit bigger, of... Uh, what the velociraptors from Jurassic Park should have, like, kind of looked like. This was a bit bigger than those, but not all that much bigger. Um, and this was from the very end of the uh, Cretaceous period, right before the, all the dinosaurs went extinct. And it's a loose relative of uh, T-Rex. Cool. So as, I, as I mentioned before, finding dinosaurs on the east coast of the U.S. is very uncommon. So I was actually pleasantly surprised that they had found dinosaurs in uh, Delaware of all places. Okay. Question. Yeah. Are there any States that name their state fossil or dinosaur that are not found in that state? To my knowledge? No. Okay. I just like was just checking in that like, it's mm -hmm. assumed that these fossils that they're naming as their state fossils are in fact in that state. Yes. Um, okay. It is, let me just double check that. Um, Cause I, I, I have most of these Wikipedia pages looked up. They're just sort of mm -hmm. pulled up on, uh, on my browser here. Um, Let's see. So I guess technically Dryptosaurus uh -huh. itself has not been found in Delaware. Um, Delaware oh. would. Oh, so, Delaware. Oh. Would. Again, this is, this is another quirk of taxonomy. Uh, another species called Crypto or another genus called Crypto Tyrannus was found in Delaware, but it is now the consensus that uh, Cryptosaurus or, or Crypto Tyrannus and Dryptosaurus are the same. So Got technically, it. yes, but with a little caveat. Got it. Of course, Delaware would do things like that. <laughs> yep. Yes, they would. <laughs> Next is probably my favorite, I think, just because it's it's a fun history. And it's, it's not a state, but we're going to look over that for the time being. But it's Washington, D.C. They have... Uh, a state fossil, quote unquote, uh, that they named in 1998 called Capitolosaurus. <laughs> That's adorable. Which All right, I'm is in. in quotes. I tried to say that with as much air quotes as you can put on something in a podcast. But so it is not officially named that. That is not an official genus. But back in uh, ye olden times of... Uh, the late 1800s, a handful of dinosaur bones were found 
while people were excavating to put in some sewers at 1st and F Streets uh, in the southeast area of Washington, D.C. And among these were a decently well-preserved vertebra. And over the years, people kind of bounced back and forth about what it was. Um, most of the things that were proposed when it was found, it, as we learned more, learned we figured out that the two major things that people thought that it could have been don't didn't live at the same time as this fossil was from. So in 1990, a paleontologist decided to call it Capital Saurus, but he didn't publish it in a formal piece of scientific literature. So it is not formally named that. So it has to be placed in quotes. Place in quotes all you want. That rules, and I think that's. I think we should just refer to it that way. Yes, I agree. So Capital Saurus is some kind of theropod dinosaur from the Cretaceous period. That's pretty much all we got. Um, but it's still a fun story and one of the quirky things about DC. There's actually a handful of things around DC named after it. There's like a Capital Saurus square, like over top of where uh, the fossil was found. Um, there's, uh, I think, like a couple statues of what it could look like in a couple of places around around DC. So um, they have a Capital Saurus Day in, on January 28th. Is Capital Saurus Day in DC? So. Um, Wow. Local politics can be fun. Um, Love it. Next up, we have. That also, oh, go ahead. That might be the nerdiest sentence ever said on this podcast. And to be clear, we have a podcast about dead things. Mm-hmm. Like, local politics can be fun. Yes. I love it. I love every part of it. So, as fun as those two things were, or those last couple were, um, we now have a couple not great ones. And of <laughs> course. One of them is from Florida. Um, uh, Florida, while not the worst on the list, is just kind of lame. So in 1976, maybe? This was one of the ones that I found several different years for, but somewhere in the vicinity of 1976. They named Agatized Coral. So it's coral that has been replaced with quartz, more or less. Basic. Which Florida has so much cool paleontology, actually. Yes, I can imagine. And they're just like, hey, here's this rock. And don't get me wrong, I'm a <laughs> geologist. I like them rocks. <laughs> but granted, 1976, I think that was a little earlier than a lot of the major people in like Florida uh, paleontology kind of got going, but they had other options by then for sure. Anywho, moving on to another stinker, uh, Georgia, its neighbor in 1976. So potentially the same year named shark teeth as their state fossil. No particular species, (laughs) just shark teeth. Okay. And it's like, There's one particular shark that most people are probably thinking of. It's the big one that people think is still alive. uh, Megalodon. And Megalodon teeth have been found in Florida or in uh, in Georgia. And I'm pretty sure they knew that at the time. So you could have just named Megalodon. That would have been way cooler. But no, just plain old shark teeth. That's a, you know, that feels like the kid that was rushing to get their homework done on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the, you were right there. You, if you spent 10 more minutes on it, we would be all set. But because you rushed it, now we're in this situation. Exactly. Um, yeah. Are any states fossil megalodon? Sneak peek? I believe so. Yes. Can right. confirm. We will not get to it this episode. Right. But yes. So, spoilers for next week. Um, Yay. So, next up, after Georgia, we have Idaho with a surprisingly really interesting one. Uh, Their state fossil that they named in 1988 is Equus simplicidens, also known as the Hagerman horse. 
So it is a species of horse from uh, the Middle Pliocene to the Pleistocene. So only, uh, you know, somewhere around 2 million to a million years ago, somewhere around there. Um, but what's interesting about it is that A, horses living in North America that weren't brought here by Europeans is just fun. I like that. Um, nice. But what's cool about this particular horse is that it is on the zebra side of horses. Ooh. Yeah, so horses today... Meaning what? Well, horses today are sort of split into three groups. There's like the, the horse horses, the donkey horses, and the zebra horses. Those are the kinds of horses we have today. And so all of the zebra horses that are alive today are in Africa. And so having a zebra in North America is just kind of neat because it's like, yeah, you're not used, you're used to seeing horses here just because they're so ingrained in American culture, but you're very much not used to seeing a zebra. Uh, And if all of its relatives are striped like that, there's no real reason to believe this one wasn't also striped to some extent. So fun times. Zebras loosen in Idaho. Which are cooler, regular zebras or uh, or horses? Like zebras or horses, if you had to pick one. Which are cooler? Oh, zebras for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which are more useful? Which are more useful? Yeah. I mean, probably horses. Horses, yeah. Fun. Zebras are kind of mean from what I've heard. That's why we've never really domesticated them. Sounds about right. All right. Yeah, they're like the... if. Horses are like on the 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 well behaved kids. Donkeys are, are <laughs> um, yeah, like donkeys are somewhere in the middle, and then zebras are the kid that gets kicked out of class all the time. So that that's why we've been able to domesticate donkeys and horses, but not zebras. Probably, I mean, domestication's weird, but yeah. I can imagine it's you know slightly more complicated. Yeah. But understood. Point taken. Next up, we have another possible contender for one of my favorites because it's so f- freaking weird. We have Illinois, whose state fossil is Tully Monstrum gregarium, also known as the Tully Monster. Uh, they, uh, they named that as their wait. state fossil in 1989. And oh boy, this is one of the weirdest animals ever. Okay, so you're saying it lives up to the name monster? Yes. So Good. Imagine, if you will, a slightly stretched out football with Hmm. sort of a fishtail at the end, but more like a rounded fishtail. And then at the front, instead of having two eyes on its face like they should be, each eye is out to the side on long, thin stalks. Um. And then coming out the front, is a long grabby arm about as long as the rest of the animal. Out of where? Its face. Mm. It's not an arm like this... like your arm. It is some kind of appendage with its mouth at the end. What? But it's not like an elephant's like trunk. Is... It's like rigid almost. It's bendable but rigid. I don't quite know if I'm remembering the correct episode, but I feel like this is like one of the animals that SpongeBob would have seen Mm. in like the advanced darkness (laughs) episode. And and I think Uh, the, the, when he's like waiting for the bus or whatever, and there's like all the, yeah. Yeah, And I'm ashamed that I don't remember the name of like the episode. It was something else bottom. Instead of bikini bottom, it was something else. But, um, so we're used to seeing weird things was like this. Rock bottom? It was I rock like bottom. It was rock You're right. Too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All All right. Right. it was rock. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're used to seeing weird things like this in the Cambrian period, way back when multicellular animal life was experimenting and trying all sorts of weird different shapes. And so, just for context, the Cambrian is somewhere ballpark 550, 500 million years ago. These guys are found around 300 million years ago. So still a long time ago, but 200 million years 
after we thought all these weirdos died. Hmm. And so people have been arguing since this thing was discovered in the 60s, what is this? Like, we know it's an animal. That is the starting point we have. But what kind of animal? We have no idea. Not even whether, we don't even know if it's some kind of vertebrate relative or a worm or an arthropod or a mollusk. We have no, like we, we have clues, but pe- there's a very strong debate still about which clues mean what. And I love this little freak. And, and it's one of the things that's also really strange about it is that we don't have just one. There are hundreds and hundreds of these, of specimens of these. All from the same time. That That's why um, the, the species name is gregarium, you know, because they're gregarious. There were lots of them. Hmm. And they're, if you've ever seen a U-Haul, um, you know how they have the, the cool art from different locations on the side? The one for yeah. Illinois is this little guy. What? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So... If you ever are driving around and you see a U-Haul with a weird alien thing from Illinois, that's what this is. And I love this little guy. It's definitely worth much more of a deep dive, uh, even though we've spent the most time on it of any fossil so far this episode. But we do have to move on. So Tully Moss from Gregarium, A+, plus, Illinois. Good job. I do appreciate <laughs> it being incorporated into, like, uh, not just like it being the state fossil and nobody ever knowing about it, like incorporated into yeah. you know, other parts of, uh, of things. Yeah, so absolutely. Next up, we have Indiana, who also just this year, 2022, named Mammut Americanum, the American Mastodon, as their uh, state fossil. And we've talked before, I think it was episode 26, uh, about elephants and their relatives. So mastodons look a heck of a lot like elephants, but function a lot differently in their ecosystem. They eat different stuff uh, and just have slightly different body shape. They're a lot squatter than elephants are their legs are shorter their bodies are a bit longer um so they look just kind of like a wrong elephant but a wrong elephant yeah and and mastodons sort of fit along with mammoths in the convenient category because they also made it up until fairly recently i think they went extinct a little bit before mammoths did in north america but not too long so a lot of places have mastodon fossils for more information about Mastodons, see episode 26. Next we have <laughs> next we have Kansas, who also does a really great job with their fossils here. Uh, they have a state flying fossil and a state marine fossil. Ooh. Yeah. Oh wow. Both? Yeah. So their state flying fossil is Pteranodon longiceps, which they named in 2014. Uh, Pteranodon, if you've seen Jurassic Park 3. Uh, it is the main pterosaur that terrorizes the group in that movie. Um, Pteranodon <laughs> is one of the more famous uh, uh, genera of pterosaurs because they're very common here in the U.S., um, especially for pterosaurs. Pterosaurs are not common, but Pteranodon is one of the more common t- uh, pterosaur fossils, uh, you know, for being a pterosaur. Uh, it was also quite big. They had a wingspan of, you know, 20, 25 feet or so, so big, big animals. Their state marine fossil, which I couldn't actually find a year for, but anyway, it doesn't matter because it's a good one. It's Tylosaurus cansensis. So Tylosaurus was one of the largest uh, genera of mosasaurs, the uh, long marine lizards, also famously from Jurassic World, even though that one is much too big but tylosaurus uh was one of the bigger species like i said they could get up to about 50 feet if you said 60 nobody would really you know glare at you um (laughs) however the species that they named is one of the smaller ones uh of this genus so 
while the bigger species in this genus could get, you know, 50 feet or so, this one only got a measly 25 feet or so. So, you know, great white sized, which is still plenty big. Still large enough. Absolutely. And I also just like that it's named after the state. That's pretty cool. How many of those do we have? We had one earlier. I forget which one. Um, it was the uh, Arkansaurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure that there's a handful. Um, okay. We'll get there. No spoilers. Right. I don't know how many more there are. Um, there are a handful that are named after places, not necessarily the state. Okay. So we... I'm almost more interested in that, to be honest. But we'll yeah, get there. Uh, well, we, do, we will have one coming up here in a little bit. Not right now, though, because next up is Kentucky, who in 1976 uh, just named Brachiopods. Is their state <laughs> fossil? All of them. So, I on no source that it said or that I that I read it was plural. It was singular on all of them. So just oh. Brachiopod. Hmm. Not specific species. You know, Brachiopoda is an entire phylum of life, I'm fairly sure. Yeah. Um, it's been a, a while since we did that episode, so I don't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure it's a phylum. Um, one of the largest groups of life that can exist. So, great job narrowing it down, Kentucky. Never. Well, I mean, never you changed. know. It is Kentucky. It is Kentucky. Yeah. Sorry to any Kentucky and friends. Um, I apologize to no That's true. <laughs> um, also, in 1976, Louisiana named their state fossil. Ooh. Their state fossil. Sophia. Yeah. Similar to Arizona, they named a plant. This is their state fossil. Oh. <laughs> well, why'd you say it like uh, that? Uh, well, I was hoping for a marine... Organism. That would make sense, but no. <laughs> Since, like, most of Louisiana yeah. is coast. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We have plants, too. Yep. So they named <laughs> Palmoxilon as their uh, state fossil. No specific species of it, but it is an extinct genus of palm that made it all the way from the late Cretaceous around 85 million years ago, all the way till about 11 million years ago. So hung around in the area for a long time, I guess. Um, hmm. And, you know, it's, it seems fairly typical of a, of a palm. Uh, it's not a, by any means like a coconut palm. So I don't know what exactly what kind of fruits or anything that it uh, had, but it's been found all over the place, everywhere from like, Wyoming, India, Egypt. So this one is by no means unique <laughs> to Louisiana. Um, yeah. So sorry, Fia. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, one thought that I had is that when I first moved down here, uh, and this probably has no relevance at all to these fossils, but uh, I there were a lot of palm trees down here and I was confused because I was like, were these like invasive that were brought over from like islands or have they always been here? Uh, I'm sure some are invasive. And, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I believe that too. But um, just that's what crossed my mind when, when you brought up this fossil. Yeah. No, especially with, with stuff like that, like palms are, very invasive because they can pretty much live anywhere that it it yeah. doesn't freeze more or less. Um, yep. Yeah. If, if, if it's on a coast and it doesn't freeze, palms will do perfectly fine. Yep. After Louisiana, we have Maine who also named a plant also in 1976. That was a little weird. Um, they named a much more exciting plant though. Uh, they named Perdica quadrifaria, which is uh, a genus of early vascular plants. So some of the first plants to have like tubes running inside their body, uh, unlike things like mosses, um, which have to just get water from their environment. They can't move it from one part of their body to another. Uh, 
So this was a group of extinct vascular plants from the Devonian period, somewhere in the vicinity of 400 million years ago. Uh, however, this guy got real big for being an early vascular plant. Um, they could get, you know, anywhere from d d different species in this genus could get different sizes, but the biggest one could get 10 feet tall, which, you know, for the time was probably some of the larger plants on, on the planet. Um, this species tended to get, you know, fairly, you know, a good bit smaller. Um, but still, uh, interesting plants known from Maine. That's not what I would really think of uh, for, for that part of the country. I wouldn't really think of too many fossils, especially this old uh, from, from Maine, just because there's been a lot of mountain building over there, over Earth's history. Mm. Next up, we have Maryland, which got very specific with their fossil. They named in 1984 a subspecies called Echophora gardenae gardenae, or gardneri gardneri, there it is, um, which is a species of predatory gastropod. So a, hmm. a predatory snail huh. um, from the Miocene. So um, it doesn't really specify... A predatory snail. Can we have a whole episode on a predatory we snail? We can do snails for sure. Snail, snails okay. are cool. I like gastropods. Uh, predatory snail? All right. Yeah, there are lots of snails that are predatory, especially marine snails. Nice. Yeah. And so they named, like I said, that subspecies, which subspecies in general in fossils is quite rare. Um, paleontologists don't tend to like to do that just because we don't, because just of how, how fossilization works, we're never going to get enough to really... In, in my humble opinion, um, name subspecies. In my opinion, might as well just name them different species. But that's neither here nor there. But I will commend Maryland because there was a name change to this snail. Uh, and like I said, they named it in 1984. They revised the name of the fossil, of, of the hey. state fossil in 1994. So they went back and, and did some follow up. So good job, Maryland. Good job, Maryland. Yeah. And Maryland also has a state fossil called Astrodon Johnstoni, which is uh, a their state dinosaur named in 1998. And this is another uh, large uh, sauropod, very similar to Sonorosaurus from Arizona, uh, also from the late early Cretaceous, somewhere around 110 million years ago or so. And... Uh, yeah, just a, you know, large to medium sized, uh, sauropod. After that, we have Massachusetts who like, uh, Connecticut named Eubrontius giganteus, the footprints as their state fossil in 1980. However, in 2021, they named Podokisaurus holiocensis as their state dinosaur. <laughs> So it is named after Holyoke, Massachusetts, is the where the spe uh, species I'm name comes from. These names, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is a, a small-ish uh, theropod dinosaur from the early Jurassic, so um, around the same places and the same times as things like Dilophosaurus, but much smaller. Um, but just a very fun name. So that's answering your question, Mike, about a. Uh, a more local species name. And I'm into it. And then lastly, for today's episode, we have the great state of Michigan, which in 2002 named Mammut Americanum, the American Mastodon, as their state fossil. So shout out to uh, big fans of the pod, Margie and Molly. Uh, Liz's mom is currently visiting her sister in Michigan. So shout out to both of you. Hopefully you'll listen while Ooh. you're both there. Um, and yeah, so that's going to, I guess, wrap up part one of, uh, of this foray through slight state politics and mini nationalism. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the fact that uh, the different states just like not just fossils, but with 
many, many, many different things will have, uh, you know, state whatevers that, you know, don't really mean a whole lot, but you know, there's something fun to look up and to, and to go through like this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you actually, you know, look more into, I really encourage you and maybe I'll harp on this a little bit more for the next episode. Um, if you know, you live in a state, uh, please look more into it because usually there is some kind of heartwarming story of like some random third grade class somewhere doing this as like a project Aww. and then their local congressman actually taking it seriously. Congressman or congresswoman. That's my sweet. Um, Thank you. And so there's, there's a handful of cases that I just in my quick reading as I was making the list um, that were just sort of sprinkled around um, of things like that happening. Um, so yeah, occasionally, like I said, state politics can be fun. And we show a good example of that today. Exactly. Absolutely. We showed, I think, 25 good examples of that today. 26 sure. if we include Washington, D.C. Well, maybe 24 if we get rid of Delaware. Ooh. Correct. Well, and we can also <laughs> get rid of Florida and Georgia because they just didn't put any effort into <laughs> their state fossils. Also Hawaii. Also Hawaii. And Iowa. And New Hampshire. Yeah. And Rhode Island. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's all I've got. Yeah. Um, so, you ready for Swamp Corner? Absolutely. I missed Swamp Corner with Fia, so here we go. Yeah, so uh, this week on Swamp Corner, I just wanted to update you guys. I have finished my summer field work. Woo! It was a week long. Uh, I think last week, I don't know. This is, I think it was last week if we're listening to this episode. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I was able to collect all of my trays, uh, which is good because I worried about some of them getting lost with like the tide mm-hmm. or boats, whatever, just things happen. But none of them got lost. All of the samples were collected and in perfect condition. Um, I also did suction sampling. So that's like underwater vacuum mm-hmm. for the first time. And uh, I was unable to do one site because there was an alligator oh. nesting about a hundred feet uh from that site and had decided so that out? yeah i did chicken out because that was the smart we went the, to the smart site. choice yeah we went like three different days and that gator was still there and then on the last day when we didn't have anything left to do and this was the last site it came closer oh. and <laughs> i was like we thought about it. We were like, well, maybe if we just stay like right next to the boat and we all huddle together, we'll be okay. But then it like, it went down under the water and then like came back a little bit closer. And I was like, no, it's definitely like aware that we're here and mm-hmm. doesn't care. So, uh, yeah, didn't do that site, but cool to see that, uh, there were alligators out there. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Yep. A wonderful like story in well. conservation. American yeah. alligators are yes. absolutely. Because <laughs> once upon yeah. a time they were real close to extinction. Yep, but now and they seem Florida. to be doing okay. Yeah, in Louisiana, I guess. Oh, they're doing fantastically, actually. <laughs> yeah, they're doing really well. <laughs> now it's it's like like less than fifty years ago they were extremely close to extinction, and now they're back to the point of like being a nuisance. But that's okay. Yep. And in this case, this one was kind of being a nuisance to me. Yeah. But again, it's okay. Yeah. So. You lived. It lived. Exactly. We all That's all lived, you can ask for. And this yeah. has been. <laughs> and considering that we are all alive at the end of it, this has been episode 83 of I Wish You Were Dead, a podcast about things that used to be alive. My name is Mike. That was Fia and Gavin. And I hope everybody is back here again next week for episode 84. But until then, all the best and take care, everybody. Bye. This episode of I Wish You Were Dead was written by Gavin Davidson and hosted by Gavin Davidson, Mike Bryson, and Fenella Campanino. It was sound edited and edited for YouTube by Gavin Davidson. Special thanks to former guests of the pod and to listeners like you.